Uh, greetings and blessings. This is Arthur Blessed out for our crosswalk on a beautiful, sunny, nice day here in Colorado. <laughs> and uh, we are getting up toward Christmas and it is wonderful. And I'm going to be sharing with you about uh, really two passages of scripture. One is uh, the passage of scripture relating to the birth of Jesus. And then the other scripture is going to be in 1 Peter, the third chapter. And I'm going to connect these two scriptures together. And I'm sure that it's been done, but I don't think that, personally, I don't think, well, I know I've never heard these scriptures connected together. And it is very unique. And it, um, it will help you and will really in, instruct you in what Christmas is all about. Uh, not only that God sent Jesus and the Word became flesh and the Savior was born, but the impact of that, the change that happens in our life and how we live that message out. So I'm going to really encourage you to stick with me, if you will. Uh, David Smith and Betty Smith Greetings and hello and blessings and all of you. Praise the Lord. Margo, hello, hallelujah. There's somebody went by on the bicycle there and said, praise the Lord. So we're having revival out here on the trail. So uh, let's, let's get right into the word of God. The change, uh, the sound may be a little bit different because uh, you will hear the... Um, uh, I'm under a bridge, <laughs> and uh, so let me get this ready, and I will uh, be right with you. Yeah, come on here, bless it. Uh, let's see. There we go. I have it down now. I just connected there the... Uh, my mic, my directional mic, and um, I will get right into the Word as we have people joining us from all over the world. Welcome, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and a blessed life. Okay, let's read from the Word of God, the scripture from Luke, the second chapter, uh, verse 13 and 14. And the topic of my talk today is Christmas gifts, peace, goodwill, and blessings. And that is how we are to live out the transformation of the living Almighty God coming to live within our life. The salvation provided by Christ through the Word becoming flesh through His sinless life, through His shed blood on the cross, and His resurrection, and His ascension to the Father. So let's look at what the Scripture says here. And it's speaking about the angel of the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Now let's look at that a little more carefully. What do we have here? We have the angel of the Lord announcing the birth of Jesus, and he has appeared to the shepherds. And and then, as he tells them not to fear, and he is then joined by 
a multitude of the heavenly host. Uh, a multitude, a mass, a huge number uh, of what? The heavenly host, the word host means the army of the Lord. It means a multitude of the heavenly beings. You see, we're not the only people God created. He, he created the angels, uh, the cherubims, the seraphims, uh, archangels, uh, and there, we don't know what else and who else God created, but with the angel came the host of heaven, filling the heavens with the joy and excitement that Jesus, who they knew, Jesus with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, they knew Jesus, and now Jesus had left the glory of heaven to take upon himself the human flesh born through the Virgin Mary without the seed of earthly man but by the Holy Spirit sinless and perfect and he was to live a sinless life that is why he could become the supreme sacrifice for the sins of the world. And so, we, this host of heaven has appeared to these shepherds. Didn't God have a love for the common person? The common person like me and you? Uh, I mean, these shepherds were in the field at night taking care of their sheep. And so they were, they were working men, and they were out, and God revealed the glory that many of the world's greatest theologians have never experienced. Many of the wealthiest people in the world know nothing about is that spiritual, glorious host of God filling the heavens and this multitude of the heavenly host, the army of God. You think we're helpless on earth? No, we're not helpless. We have the army of God at the disposal of God, praising God. What were they doing? They were praising God. They were rejoicing and saying, glory to God in the highest and and on our earth peace goodwill toward men now that is what uh, the King James Version says and I want to just uh, read to you some other translations because this word um, about uh, uh, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. This, this word translated goodwill toward men is a very interesting word. Uh, it is a uh, yokeia. That's a poor way of pronouncing the Greek transliteration of the, uh, I mean, the English transliteration of the Greek word, but it means good pleasure goodwill, favor, are pleased. So I'm going to give you the NIV says, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The NLB, New Living Bible, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Now, what, uh, we're focusing on the end at this time of each of these phrases. 
The English Standard Version says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The Berean Study Bible, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And the NASV version says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And the King James Version says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And this word men here uh, means humanity. It's not necessarily male, but it is humanity, human beings, people of all ages, all races. It is uh, talking about human beings. The Heritage Bible uh, says, Glory to God in the highest, and upon earth peace in men of beautiful good thinking. Uh, this is a powerful scripture that carries great uh, emphasis upon the person that is willing to receive the good news. Uh, see, not everybody is interested in, in loving their neighbor, doing good to those that despitefully use them. Not everybody is interested in putting God before self. Not everybody is interested in denying yourself and taking up your cross and following Christ. So, the message of rejoicing and and peace on earth comes to those who are willing to receive the peace of Christ. For some people, they say, I will never forgive somebody. People are gripped with hate, bitterness, self-centeredness, selfishness, greed, envy, strife. The message of Christ comes booming out of heaven to the world with the host of heaven declaring that Jesus Christ has come. He is born and peace on earth, goodwill. Peace on earth to those who have goodwill. Peace on earth to people whom God is pleased with. God wants to give you peace and his blessings and his joy, but we have to be willing to receive. And then having received, it should transform our lives. So we're looking on this day at Christmas, and we're thinking about this message from the host of heaven saying, and, and we might take note that they were not singing. This is the word for speaking. Uh, so I do love good Christian uh, Christmas music, but they, uh, they were not singing out there. They were saying these words, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward everybody, men, women, children. Now, how does this connect with 1 Peter, the third chapter, verse 8 and 9? Many of you know that I am, uh, those that are regular, I'm doing a lot during the week uh, on 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter, and really kind of toward the weekends, uh, the Gospel of John. God bless you. And uh, so I wanted to, I, I was studying this in 1 Peter, and I saw how this connects together. 
because when we receive Christ and, and, and His Holy Spirit comes to indwell us, then we have a new nature. It is not the nature of the world. It is the nature of God. And that should manifest itself in our life. Let's look at 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. Finally, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, humble in spirit. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this end you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Now I'll bet many of you did not know you could inherit a blessing. The Bible says it. And I've been studying all Oh, I could go for hours on blessings, and maybe I'll start a series on blessings before too long, but let's look at this. For many of us, we've received Christ. We've put our faith and trust in Him. You were born again. You became a new creation. You see, uh, the scripture says, therefore, if any person be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. So we have a new nature from the old nature of the world. The nature of the world says, if you do evil to me, I'll do you back. Uh, I'll do... You insult me, I'll insult you. The, the nature is payback. The nature of the worldly nature is giving back evil for evil, a curse for a curse. But when we're a new creation in Christ, our our words should be different from the way they were before we knew Christ. Our thoughts should be different from the way that they were, the way of the world. Our emotions should be different. Our very nature, what comes out of us, should be a witness of itself that we are born again, that we are walking with Jesus. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And what does it look like? It looks like us being harmonious. Being in harmony one with another, not in conflict. It shouldn't be that followers of Christ should be arguing and fussing and fighting and saying nasty things and nasty behavior. Those kind of things shouldn't be a part of us. We should have the harmony of the host of heaven. But sadly, it's not true. In, the, in our world today, uh, much of the greatest opposition that I've had to carrying the cross, most of the opposition has come from so-called Christians and, and not from those who you would think would be objecting to the cross. Uh, I mean, I have, if, I've never seen bitterness and hate like I have from 
many people who name the name of Christ. You know, oh, you shouldn't be carrying the cross. Jesus already did it. And, and, and they, you know, they start red in the face and mad and, oh, wow. Uh, and I, you know, sometime we have those kind of people visit our site uh, and post those kind of comments. And I, uh, I delete them. If they keep it up, I ban them. Because uh, I don't want to listen to it or uh, I don't want it to be a part of disrupting our unity, our harmonious gathering in the name of Jesus. That's why we steer clear of religious debates and politics. And if you want that, you can go to plenty of websites that will uh, give you that, but uh, but with me, uh, I I don't want it, and I don't. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Just sit down here. Let me. I found a little bench to sit down on, so let me uh, rest up here. I've been uh, out carrying the cross a good while, but okay. So we want to have a harmonious spirit. You, you can say things in a harmonious way. You don't have to go into detail and tell all the nasty things that somebody did. You can just say, I have a prayer request. You don't have to blast your ex or your children or your parents or your neighbor or anybody else. You can be loving and kind and harmonious, sympathetic. One of the most, uh, one of the most, I'll get up and keep carrying the cross here. The, uh, one of the most, uh, um, one of the most uh, hurtful places is uh, when there are Believers giving prayer requests that go into all kind of personal details and they're not sharing this with somebody uh, that's a close friend that you know and but, but this is public and I remember growing up hearing those kind of prayer requests and I Man, prayer meetings on Wednesday night were sometime some of the most slanderous place there was to gather because they were telling brother so and so and what he did and and they're they're they're, they're just gossiping and they're putting it in the form of a prayer request. That's not being sympathetic. You you don't have to name somebody and then say that they're committing adultery or something else. Boy, get a hold of your tongue. Get a hold of your fingers. Put your fingers in your pocket. <laughs> and don't type those kind of, of uh, blasting, unsympathetic, unkind emails or comments or living a life that is not sympathetic to a person's need. So finally, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly. What does this brotherly mean? Uh, I've met a number of people that have a, a fellowship of brothers. And these are like men that get together or women that get together. The brotherly means... Uh, not like fighting brothers, but, but loving brothers. Uh, we are to actually care for one another. We are to care about the needs of another. And, and sometimes we, I don't know, sometimes we don't help people 
because it's not a tithe to the church. In other words, you see a need, you have, you see somebody that does need need help, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, somebody, and and they need to pay their light bill, or they go going to lose their car if they don't make the car payment or something. But we somehow don't don't think of individually if it's not a if we don't get a tax deduction, we we don't want to give. Oh, I tell you, uh, the world operated long before taxes started. When did they start in America? Back in the early 20th century, there, 19 something, I believe, income tax and coming up with deductions. This is getting away from that. This is this is saying, I care. Jesus lead me and where there is a need I want to help whether I get tax credit or not uh, I want to be a, a brother a sister to somebody kind-hearted have you ever met somebody that was a kind-hearted I don't know about you but I, I grew up on a farm and um, I remember there in Mississippi Delta, Louisiana Delta, if there was somebody was talking about somebody and they said mentioned somebody's name or whatever, and, and somebody would say, that, that, that's a good man. That's a good man. Uh, or that is a, that's a good lady. That's a, a good lady. And they were meaning kind-hearted. That means if... Uh, if you had a need and it would inconvenience them, they would still help you. They would go out of their way to do something for you that needed to be done. Uh, I saw people, as I grew up, I saw somebody that was having a problem with, uh, with their crop and that it had been raining or something, they weren't being able to get all the crop planted and everything, and the neighbors would come over and help them, uh, leave their own field and go over and help a neighbor plant cotton or plant corn or build their house, come over and, uh, what was that they would call it? Uh, oh, it slips from my mind right now. Uh, kind of a, uh, they, they would come over and help you, a uh, quilting party, the women would get together, uh, and others would get together and the whole neighborhood would help build a house or build a barn, there was a term, I forgot what it was, but kind-hearted and humble in spirit. This is how we are to behave, we're to have a humble spirit. Not necessarily tooting our own horn about everything or trying to get all the attention, but of a humble heart. And, and this is how God wants us to be. If when we have His peace in our heart, when we have his, his blessing, when we have His favor resting upon us. Oh, barn raising. Hallelujah there. Thank you, Juliet. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and Margot, quilting bee. You know what I'm talking about. Barn raising, quilting bee. Oh, I've got some people that know, can understand Southern, <laughs> can understand country can understand real English. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need is old-fashioned love, caring about somebody, going out of our way, not trying to pick a fight, but making peace. So when the peace of Christ, peace on earth, the host of heaven said, because there's peace in the heavens, 
because the devil has been cast out and all of his demonic spirits, all the fallen angels, they're reserved unto judgment. And then at the last judgment, they will be cast into the lake of fire. But there's harmony with God. There's peace with God. And so there is a sympathetic and a harmonious attitude. There's brotherly love. There is kind heartedness and a humble spirit. And the opposite of a, hungry, of a humble spirit is an arrogant, egotistical spirit. Uh, a me spirit. Uh, I can rather than God can. And I know that much of this uh, is taught in our schools and in society. Uh, I, 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 I can, I am. What about God is? What about praising God instead of yourself or somebody else? If we got as excited, if I got as excited over, I mean, my sharing about Jesus as people were yesterday about football games, you, you would think I had lost my mind. People would be calling 911 and said, there's a guy out there with a cross that's gone crazy. He's jumping up and down and and rolling around and he's got a all kind of of uh clown clothes or something and he's oh you would you would you understand you turn on the tv and you see that and you think these are just good sports people they're getting excited i'm not condemning anybody for being excited about football if that turns you on then roll a ball throw a ball uh but we ought to get excited about a God that made a big round world. And that's what I'm excited about. So here we are. Let's look at the next verse. Do not repay evil for evil, or insult with insult. Boy, that is a very powerful scripture. Somebody insults you, you want to insult them back. You know what I've found uh, in carrying the cross? Many times I have people mocking at me or whatever. I'll say, Jesus didn't have a wheel on his cross. <laughs> and I, I, I wave and I laugh and I say, no, he didn't have four wheels on his car either. And I laugh and they'll laugh. I kind of ease it off. You don't, you don't. Hold yourself in such high esteem that you that you've got to fight back and, and, and return evil with evil. Somebody says something evil of you, you don't have to defend yourself. Just because you don't say anything doesn't mean you don't have a defense. My dad taught me when I was a teenager a little a life lesson and I won't go into how that story about that story but my dad laying in a hospital bed after evil had been done to him said son God said vengeance is mine saith the Lord it's not yours to take vengeance on anybody and I said but daddy and he said don't say but he said, let God handle the vengeance. Let God, God can take care of himself. And uh, so don't give evil for evil. Many of you have a long list of people that have done evil to you and, and some of them a long list of the evil that one person has done. But the Bible says here, we're not to return evil for evil are insult with insult. And I tell you, it's, it's just amazing when you hear how people are using Twitter and Facebook and other things and 
and they're hurling insults at people and other people insult them back. And now even comedy is, uh, is full of just insults, not funny jokes, but insult after insult. Much of the music is full of insults against other people. And this is not the way of the Christ of Christmas. What, what is the way? 1 Peter 3, 9, the last part says, but with blessings. What are you supposed to do with those who are not harmonious, who are unsympathetic, who have no brotherly love, who have not a kind heart, who are not humble in spirit, who do and speak evil and give insults? What is to be our reaction? Bless them. Blessings. But with blessings. So, and, and listen to this. You follow me. You're going to find something that's going to set you free. But with blessings. Because to this you were called. When you came to Christ, you were called. Hi, Roxanne. Oh, I'm glad to see my dear friend, Roxanne. Oh, wow. We had many, many wonderful chats uh, at a very special restaurant where she was. And, boy, when well, we come in, we got to really know one another and family and everything. And, oh, God bless you, Roxanne. And uh, Roxanne is one of those really beautiful followers of Christ that uh, she and her husband and uh, anyway, the, a wonderful person. And that's what life is about. I'm so glad to see Roxanne. And God bless you too, Stuart. So what are we to do? We are to bless because to this you were called. Did you know you were called by Christ to bless people? To bless people. And it continues, so that you may inherit a blessing. Now, 1 Peter was written to followers of Christ. And Peter was, the, the author of, the, of 1 Peter and 2 Peter was Simon Peter, who was one of the disciples of Christ. And obviously, Simon Peter was a bold witness, but he... He had uh, some of those uh, hot temper and, uh, and even cursing and de denied Jesus and a lot of problems. But the Lord hung on to him and got him straight and he became the mighty man of God, the pillar of the church. And, uh, and so God, the Holy Spirit is writing through him and he says, so that you may inherit a blessing. A blessing. So that he was talking to believers. And he was saying, by blessing people, by being kind-hearted and loving and kind and all of these things, we inherit an inheritance most of the time, you get an inheritance. Uh, Sometimes you can get, say, part of an inheritance while you're, while the person is still alive. But most of the time, we think of an inheritance as what somebody gets after somebody dies. Well, Christ died for our sins and rose again, and He has a blessing that He wants to give in our life, not only to save our soul, yes, but He wants to bless you now, and hear me, now and in eternity. In eternity, there is a blessing. A blessing 
that's reserved. The Bible, Jesus said, store not up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust uh, corrupt and thieves can break through and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven, in heaven. So in heaven, there should be a whole pile of blessings and treasures that God has kept for you there. And, and you say, but if somebody got a, a blessing for being so loving when they could have been so nasty, uh, what about all those who don't get a blessing? But they were, they were saved, but they, they didn't exhibit too many of these things you were just talking about. Well, nobody will have that attitude in heaven because there's no sin in heaven. There'll be no selfishness, no uh, arrogance, no evil thoughts. Uh, so so there, you, you, that won't even cross your mind. I think sometimes when I'm, uh, th this is my philosophy, my understanding, I believe, that I want to share a thought with you that, uh, that, let's just say that you go to a shopping mall. Now, the, the, this is not, this is not the Bible. This is me giving a, an illustration. But I believe it's based upon the Word of God that you, you're walking through with your family. You have a little five-year-old, maybe you have a teenager, and maybe you're with Grandma too, and you're middle-aged. Let's do that. You're walking through a big mall, and there are all kinds of stores. Well, do you think Dad who likes to play golf or soccer or fish or hunt is going to go running toward the toy store? No. <laughs> no. But what does the five-year-old do? The five-year-old goes to the toy store. Daddy, Mommy, look, look, bicycle, you know, toys and whatever. The teenage girl, she sees, uh, or teenage boy, sees a clothes store, uh, some fashion, or maybe a sports store, or whatever, if they're into soccer or football or whatever. They, they, they're attracted to that. Uh, maybe another person in the family is uh, looking for a bookstore wants to read something, book on poetry or historical novel or something. You understand that all of these age groups and different personalities are attracted to different things in the shopping mall. And my concept of heaven, how I believe the rewards will be, uh, because the scripture tells that the, that will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be rewarded for the works done in the flesh. That didn't mean that that, that saves us. Our works don't save us. The what Christ did on the cross saves us. But our life should produce fruit. And, and I kind of believe that when we get to heaven, there'll be some people that'll just, that'll just be so excited about the gold and the diamonds and the jewelry, and they will be, they'll just be happy as can be. There'll be others that are, uh, are pursuing the understanding of, of the nature of God uh, and the glory of His holiness. And so, depending upon how we have matured on earth has prepared us to how we will be able to experience heaven. Uh, for some, it will be an emphasis on a family reunion and on others. 
It will be uh, the awesomeness of the divine God, the creative mind of God, power of God, holiness of God. And everybody in heaven will be satisfied and happy. But those who have come to know God and have a relationship with him on earth, that will continue and expand in heaven. Uh, when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, that was when Jesus was, transfor was transfigured and his garments began to glow and he began to glow uh, with the brightness. And then uh, Moses and Elijah came uh, and visited with him and the disciples uh, fell down upon their face and uh, and the glory of God was all about it was uh, a manifestation of the glory of God kind of like when the heavens opened at the birth of Christ but why did Jesus call Moses and Elijah and not somebody else not somebody else we never heard of. Not somebody else that, uh, see, none of the disciples that were there with Jesus had ever seen them. But now they recognize them. Uh, Jesus called from heaven Moses and Elijah because they were discussing the crucifixion. They were ones that God could confide in they could comprehend and be a talkative friend with Jesus and and so they were uniquely qualified when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration he had with him Peter James and John why didn't he take all the disciples because these were just the ones that were able to go into this deeper intimacy with Christ. Uh, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane before uh, he was betrayed, and the night before the crucifixion, uh, the disciples went with him, the eleven. Judas, having already gone away to betray him, and then from the 11, Jesus called Peter, James, and John. And uh, I believe uh, that uh, Andrew, I believe Andrew was with that group. But there was just three or four called separately to be with Jesus when he was in agony, sweating drops of blood. Why weren't the others? Why did he choose these? Because they, they were not able to comprehend and share with Christ in his suffering. And yet they went to sleep. And Jesus kept going back to them and waking them up. And and yet they were they were keep they kept falling asleep and they slept through the lord's greatest need my dear friend god wants to be close with you he wants to be intimate with you he wants to walk with you and talk with you and laugh with you and enjoy life with you and and you to enjoy him and him to fellowship with you. You understand what I'm saying? This is absolutely wonderful. It is, it is the treasure of life. And for those of you who seek and go on beyond the normal and 
and have an extraordinary walk with Christ. You're going to receive an inheritance, a blessing in heaven. Because many of those who have been faithful to the Lord have died in prison. They have died being fed to the lions or martyred, beheaded, stoned, suffered for Christ, starved to death. But they were kind. They were loving. They were sharing Christ. They were living a life that was not of this world, but from God. And when they get to heaven, they're going to inherit, they're going to inherit a blessing, a blessing. Don't let somebody on this earth rob you of a spiritual blessing in heaven. Because if we're not careful, we will become like the world instead of like Christ. I had no idea that I was going to talk for 50 minutes when I first started sharing this. But uh, I, I think we have... Uh, we have, I see it's 51 minutes, 24 seconds. And I've had a wonderful time. I love Jesus. I love people. <laughs> I love carrying the cross. I love preaching the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. And, and I'm not going to uh, allow what anybody says about me good or bad or whatever, to destroy my relationship with God and drag me into the mud that they're wallowing in. I'm going to keep going. You say, but, but, uh, but, but if it's not true, why don't you defend yourself? I ain't got anything to defend. Jesus made himself of no reputation. And if he made himself of no reputation, See, people have, since uh, the birth of Christ, I mean, they've been questioning whether Mary was a virgin or not. Uh, he's lived under the slander and insults that are hurled at him. And the people that use the name of God in vain, the people who use the name of Jesus in vain, as curse words? Hey, look how humble God is. But just know that one day there's a judgment day. And we are to exhibit in our life a different nature. A different road to walk. Walking it with Jesus. Every step I take, I take with Jesus. He is always by my side, walking over hills and through the valleys. In Him I abide. He is the King, the King of glory. In His will I now abide. Oh yes, oh yes, Jesus is the sweetest name I know and he's just the same as his lovely name that's the reason why I love him so for Jesus is the sweetest name I know Hallelujah, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning we lift our voice to Thee. 
at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. O oh, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Ah, away in a manger. Ah, praise the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, oh, there's something about that name. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about that name. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear awesome wonder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, my glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield to me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. My glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. Oh, you say, Arthur, how did you walk around the world? on the world's longest walk. The independent newspaper in Britain, they said when the movie came out, The Cross, they and watched the movie and knew the history, they said 
This is without a doubt the greatest endurance feat in uh, human history of walking around the world. But I tell you, I walked with Jesus. He's with me. I walked praising Him, glorifying God, being happy in the Lord, whether anybody else is or not, going through wars, deserts, jungles, saying, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, wow. We need to allow the glory of God to shine into our heart and bring transforming nature that we become more and more like Jesus every day. So I invite you, you're unsure whether you're saved or not. Pray this prayer with me. As I'm walking down this road trail, wherever you are, just call out upon the name of the Lord. Sean, Margo, everybody, Heavenly Father, I believe that you love me and that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and that he rose again and lives with you. Right now, forgive my sins, Lord Jesus. I repent. I welcome you in my heart. Save me. Cleanse me. Give me a new nature, a new heart, a new mind. I want to walk and live with you now and for all eternity. In Jesus' name I pray. You're my Savior. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that are believers, I encourage you to say, Lord God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the fruit of the Holy Spirit that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, and self-control will fill my heart and be my nature, the nature of my life. Make me holy, holy, holy unto you. You are my Lord and my God. Thank you. Oh, I pray you have a blessed day. I'm just getting started. I could go on and on for hours and hours, but uh, I'll stop here at one minute and three, I mean, uh, one hour and three seconds. Boy, I tell you, we're having church out here with people around the world. I never dreamed such, such would happen when I was younger, and now look what's happening. Okay. I love you. God bless you. I'll finish now and have a wonderful, blessed day. I'll be back with you soon. Let me uh, turn around here just a little. Uh, yeah, so I can see you as I go. Thanks, Margo. Thanks, Leonard. Uh, love you all. God bless you. Have a blessed Merry Christmas with Jesus and a Jesus New Year. Diane. All right. Praise God. Let's see. I, I don't know how I... Uh, I used to be able to see all the names of people. Uh, Colby and Heike and all the thumbs up and the hearts. Love you all. Peace be with you. Got more gospel to preach on more internet websites. I, <laughs> I'm a preaching machine for Jesus walking, talking, preaching, praying. Hallelujah! 
Have a great day. Blessings. Amen.